if you chose to play this episode there's a good chance that you have been meditating or trying to meditate meditation has certainly come a long way the smartphone apps yoga studios meditation centers online blogs magazines youtube videos and you know popular names like oprah ariana huffington deepak chopra uh, maharishi mahesh yogi swami vivekananda and so many other spiritual teachers have helped immensely in bringing the much needed attention to meditation practice irrespective of all the attention and popularity that meditation has been getting i feel there are still many people who feel that meditation is not really working out for them or they feel maybe they're not doing it the right way i certainly come across so many people who tried to meditate and they just got disappointed by how it didn't work out for them or maybe it didn't meet their expectations before i talk further i would love to ask you do you feel that meditation is not working out for you or working out for you really well how consistent do you think you are in your practice and yeah interesting question that i always ask everyone have you ever had a bad experience with a meditation teacher because maybe they don't walk their talk or maybe they just triggered you in a wrong way and it turned you off to meditate and very important and practical question <laughs> do you feel zen when you are sitting on the meditation cushion and maybe listening to the perfect music with the incense around you uh, but as soon as you leave the cushion your mood shifts from feeling divine to experiencing the devil you know in you does that ever happen well if this is happening you're not alone and this is what i want to touch upon today in this episode i want to share my experiments and experiences with meditation my experiences included you know stealing spiritual books from my father's library when i was barely i think 12 year old uh, and uh, my experiences also include traveling and assisting uh, my guru my father in the mountains of himalayas river ganga monasteries uh, tantra temples uh, learning to write the mantras learning to chant the mantras meditating all nights and experimenting almost too much with my third eye and other interesting mystic stuff i really want to share as much as i can in today's episode at the end of the episode i will give you a mantra that you could start to build a certain consistent meditation practice as well this is the kind of episode that i wish i had access to when i started to experiment and meditate deeply i hope you will connect with it i am chandresh bhardwaj and this is break the norm So my experiments and journey with meditation started at a very young age. I feel it started at the young age because I grew up in the in a family of gurus, uh, spiritual teachers and healers. Also I think growing up in India you are exposed to you know different kind of mindset which is very much into spirituality. The kind of movies I watched, the kind of places I visited uh, with my parents that definitely i'm sure affected it but even my friends were exposed to those kind of places or mindset but they were not into meditation as much as i think i was because i used to clearly feel that i almost had an obsession with the cosmic world i wanted to know what's consciousness what's third eye how do i open third eye and i used to watch uh, tv shows uh, which portray the power of third eye spirituality in a very powerful way so my superheroes were not batman or spider man or anything else from disney my superheroes were really krishna buddha and shiva i grew up watching their stories listening their stories and very soon i started thinking i want to be one of them so that really became my motivation to meditate and you know as a teenager i think 
when you start to feel infatuated or develop curiosity for something, it just builds up extremely fast. And I'm glad it happened that way because I feel it added a lot of strength and courage in my spiritual journey. And my obsession motivated me to read into any Tantra book that I could find. So I come from Tantra lineage. We'll definitely have a separate episode that Tantra deserves. And one of my intentions uh, with this podcast is to share more and more about the authentic Tantra practices. But in nutshell, Tantra is the technique of self-awareness. That's what Tantra means. That's what Tantra lineage is all about. It's not acrobatic sexuality that most people, you know, connect Tantra with. So I was fascinated with Tantra, meditation, third eye on and all this good stuff. And I would try to read it. I would try to find the secrets in it. But all I could do was just do a mantra, meditate in and out, breathe in and out. And those mantras were just picked from here and there. So again, growing up in India, you know certain seed mantras, which are just practiced in your school prayer, or you know they appear on TV or very common and popular in day-to-day -day things. So I would experiment with those mantras. I used to ask my father, who's my spiritual guru, for the right mantra, the powerful mantra. And he would tell me, just meditate for next two weeks and I'll give you the mantra. And he kept on doing that. And at one point, I even complained to my mother that dad is giving me hard time. He's not giving me the mantra. So my mother is my post office uh, box for uh, all the complaints that I have for my father. Uh, she she does quite a just, you know, good justice to it. And she makes sure my complaints are delivered to him and uh, they're honored and they're listened. So when she he told her that the mantra has to be earned, it has to be understood and lived. I cannot just give him the mantra. He needs to get into a sincere practice of meditation rather than just being infatuated by this whole third eye thing. So kept on putting me on this two week thing and uh, five years were gone. And it was after five years that I got my first mantra. Again, I'm really happy things happened in that way. Otherwise, I would not have really known the power or the essence of mantras. In these five years, my obsession was taking on different forms. I was, you know, I would stay awake all night to meditate. I would experiment with my third eye a bit too much. I would try to do different affirmations or try to build a certain telepathic power. And I was not even 15, but I was experimenting, as I said, a bit too much. I remember the way I used to express anger was through meditation because I saw these TV shows on uh, spirituality, on different uh, mythology characters, where all the monks and gurus would express their anger through third eye. And I thought that's just how you express anger. And anytime I'm, you know, I was angry with my parents, I would lock myself in the meditation room and uh, start meditating. And one day I lit six incense sticks. And I started to meditate with those incense sticks. And I started smelling some, that if something is burning around me and I opened my eyes and the bed sheet I was sitting on, that was burning because the six incense sticks did not really gel well with each other. And I got scared. I started, you know, sprinkling water to make sure the fire doesn't spread and thank God it didn't spread. But there were many silly experiments that I still think about. I'm glad I did those experiments and I'm really glad nothing really got out of hand because then it would have been a challenge. So these were the times when I was in my early teenage. Now I'm 32. So much has you know shifted, not only in my personal spiritual journey, but the whole you know scene of meditation has shifted. I divide my time in LA and New York and uh, I see these two cities, especially LA, so much awareness, so much popularity, meditation is gaining. So when anything starts to gain popularity, things starts to move in an interesting way. And when things move in an interesting way, you only have so much control over them. But then you also have this responsibility to do them rightly to move forward with them in the most conscious way possible. 
one of the interesting examples of meditation becoming anything and everything is the uh, cuddling meditation i don't know if you have heard of it i know about it because i got invited to one of these cuddling meditations and uh, they wanted me to start the meditation with a poetry poetry that you know written by me the subject of the email was that we are inviting you as a speaker so i opened it I was excited to know what it's all about so I, it turned out it's just a bunch of people who are going to cuddle with each other on a friday night and there are free rooms available who want to take things beyond cuddling so it looked and felt very awkward creepy and not honoring even the joy of cuddling honestly so i had to let it go but i started exploring what else is going on in the meditation world how crazy this is <laughs> this whole thing has gone but that's what happens right but it reminded me how much responsibility that i have to share the authentic side of meditation anyone can start a uh, cuddling meditation beer meditation donut meditation you know you name it and someone is doing it already and i realized they can do whatever they want to do or whatever they feel is the right way to meditate but i need to uh, make sure i spread the word about the right experiences or the right methods or the right way to dive deeper into meditation based on my state of awareness and that's what i've i've been trying honestly one of the problem is there is too much information on meditation you can read books about it you can watch youtube videos podcast there's tons of information and when there is too much information but very little experience of something it it's chaotic it's just wrong there are certain things in life that truly demand experience you don't need to read about them you don't need to think about them you just need to dive into them the experience of you know love making the experience of meditation the experience of just giving someone compassion just listening to someone they don't need too much reading they just need you to be fully present and trust what's happening within and i understand sometimes we just need a little guidance but it's 20% guidance and 80% of action you know 25% of reading and 75% of mindful action over it but what's happening now is we are giving too much attention to the information but very little or no attention to the right experience and by reading too much we are creating just spiritual bubbles around us just illusions around us i can talk to you right now and i look at the time it's 11 11 am and it makes me feel oh i am in the divine moment only because that's what i have been reading on instagram and on various books when you start to meditate deeply you start to go beyond all these notions of numbers astrology whole aura reading and tarot reading kind of thing i'm not against any of these but i don't like when they start limiting the human experience and you could meet the best astrologer and they will agree with this someone who truly knows astrology or numerology or any of these sciences they will agree that the purpose of these sciences is to kind of give you a kick start and then you have to dive deeper into your own consciousness your own mindful actions that's what is human consciousness all about and when you start to meditate don't set any fixed outcome to the entire experience don't set any rigid agenda to the experience just allow yourself to be into it and trust what's showing up there are many ways to get started with meditation my intention with this podcast is to give you and introduce you different interesting ways and hopefully one of those ways will resonate with you or maybe more than one and then you'll hopefully start to put the time and effort that's needed to cultivate this practice before i give you the mantra i want to share one thing about the guided meditations so guided meditations obviously have become kind of the main way how people meditate nowadays in eastern traditions there's no concept of guided meditation and you could go to a, a buddhist monastery 
and you'll probably find no mention of guided meditation even there also. I don't know how it's originated. To me, it seems like very much a, a Western concept. I was introduced to it first time in Manhattan. I remember I I went to college in Manhattan and I was coming back from college and I saw this bookstore where they had the audio CDs with the titles of guided meditation. And I thought it's maybe some random singer or speaker or spiritual teacher. They have this guided meditation thing and I, I ignored it. And very soon I realized that's just how people understand meditation. So guided meditations are good when you have not meditated at all or when you need a certain push or motivation. But eventually you need to go beyond the guided meditation simply because no one should be guiding how you need to meditate. Just the way no one should be guiding you how you need to express your love, anger, desire because it's your own thing. You need the skills to develop your expression. You need to cultivate the skills to express your love. You need to cultivate the skills to express your strength and channel it properly. If there's someone who's always telling you when to eat, how to eat, when to love, how to love, when to do this or say that, you're simply becoming a puppet to someone's hands. And that's not a nice situation. And when I you know, see people in the guided meditation experiences, I feel it makes people too soft. It makes people too dependent on the voice. And again, it's a great thing if you need the kickstart, if you have never meditated and you need a certain kind of experience. But even the students who come to my public lectures or classes very often, I tell them, take a break from me. You need to cultivate your own experience of meditation, which is silent meditation, which is truly guided by your own awareness. And if you have ever attended my meditation, I make it a point where I shut up and I tell you to trust your awareness and go with it. Because that's what the right meditation is. That's how the right meditation experiences are cultivated. If you always depend on someone else, you will not truly develop an experience with the unknown in meditation because you will always be depending on someone's voice. And honestly, it's not going to take you beyond the body or mind or thoughts. You'll still be very much into that voice and the zone. And it may give you a psychological comfort or bliss for those 20 minutes, but that's about it. And that's soft way to meditate. I'm not a fan of uh, this spa kind of meditation where someone is just giving you that comfort. I feel the right meditation is something that could be discomforting, but a very relevant one. And there are good chances no one is going to tell you that guided meditation is not good, that your independent meditation is good because it just affects the business, right? But trust me, if you want to experience the magic, the bliss of meditation, start meditating on your own as much as you can for every guided meditation do at least three your own meditations and then keep increasing the ratio and do let me know how that works out for you and one of the mantras that i want to give you today it's a mantra that i, I find it very practical very much informative as well um and it, I hope uh, that as you develop a relationship with this mantra, you will start to experience a shift with this mantra. The mantra is Sat Chit Ananda. Sat means truth. Chit means consciousness. Ananda means bliss. As you meditate consciously, focusing on your breathing, being a witness to the body, being a witness to the breathing, gently, consciously repeat the mantra Sat Chit Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda. This mantra describes the entire journey of a human consciousness. Most of us start our meditations with this hunger for bliss, 
for happiness because life is stressed out we are surrounded by craziness and this mantra gives you a glimpse into the bliss first after you start to experience the bliss then you want to know the truth who are you why are you here what is the meaning of this life what is the purpose of relationships and so many other questions start to show up so after you experience the bliss the next biggest challenge is to know the truth which is satya and after you start to experience the truth then you want to know what is the secret of my birth and what's going to happen after the death and that takes you into the whole world of consciousness that is there anything more than this body is there anything more than this whole social identity so what starts from truth moves into consciousness and bliss forms a good kick start into this whole journey and the mantra sat chit ananda it takes you into the experience of all three elements the right way or one of the ways to meditate on this mantra is to first give yourself a good relaxing energy stay in silence for a few moments and then breathe in breathe out and repeat that for a good few minutes and after that maybe bring your awareness on the heart or wherever your awareness wants to go just allow it to move there and without moving your lips quietly silently consciously repeat sat chit ananda and just witness what happens within you as you repeat this mantra and understand no mantra should be chanted blindly on a super fast speed they all need to be consciously done they all need to be felt consciously and sat chit ananda is one of those mantras where you will extract a lot out of it once you start to chant it consciously with awareness and every gap between the chanting between the repetition that gap is sacred that gap is very powerful i would love if you could just be a witness to that gap and i could have done a guided meditation for you with this mantra but there's a reason i don't want to do it today i don't want you to introduce you to this mantra by giving you my version of it i want you to experiment yourself with this mantra first and then after a few episodes i'll record a meditation i'm traveling to himalayas in the next few days and i'm going to take my tiny mic with me and i'll be using that mic to record a guided meditation while i'm watching the himalayas sitting by the river ganges and hopefully you will feel the vibrations you'll feel the love of those mountains with you so my intention with this episode was to really share what meditation is and what it is becoming and what are the steps or elements that you can cultivate to taste the authentic meditation practice so meditation could be self acceptance meditation could be understanding the breathing being in the present moment and all these things are very important in meditation for me meditation is truly becoming receptive and open to the higher dimensions when i am in the body in the mind and i'm being affected by the body and mind the noise in the body and mind that's okay i have to witness it and after i continue to witness the noise the energy the sensations in the mind and body then gently slowly i start to surrender to my awareness and as i connect with awareness i release myself from the past and the future and i start to become more and more receptive to the consciousness to the higher dimensions and honestly for me that's what meditation is if you resonate with what we shared today definitely drop a comment on my instagram at cbmeditates 
or write to me on my website cbmeditates.com and I would love to see any review or rating of this podcast. My intention is to keep improving it. Keep listening to your feedback and keep sharing more. Enjoy your day. Talk to you soon. I hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness, light, courage, passion and so much more. Please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms. I am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast.